it is not a it is not a dog leash, if you will. Um, although sometimes we get that joke. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching and listening to the Props Clear podcast. I'm your host, Jillian Angeline. We're talking all about drones and about improving public perception surrounding the unmanned aircraft industry. Now these talks are for informational, educational, and entertainment purposes only, so none of this constitutes legal advice. If you've been enjoying this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow on podcast platforms. Now fasten your seatbelts and let's get started. Today's guest is Kyle Mel. He's the head of government sales at Ellistair. Hi, Kyle. Thank you so much for joining me and talking all about Ellistair. Fascinating company. And, you know, most of my show talks about drones that are flying in the sky, but yours are, of course, tethered to the ground. And there are definitely advantages to having that kind of technology out in the world right now. First of all, can you define what a tethered drone is for people who may not know what it is? Yeah, in interesting concept, right? Jillian, thanks for having me. So so tethered drones, right? The biggest, the biggest problem that we're addressing, right, is the ability to fly for longer periods of time, right? So you think of your typical free flying drones, you're gonna have anywhere from half an hour, maybe up to 45 minutes into an hour flight time. Gotta come back down and land, change the batteries, do what you need to do. Tether drone basically bypasses that with our own power and data source through the tether line. So it is not a, it is not a dog leash, if you will. Um, although sometimes we get that joke, but that, that power cord, that tether is for power and data to be able to go from your sensor through that tether into your your tether station on the ground and then from that out to your gcs or your your uh, laptop in our our scenario so it's basically not just a string it's, Correct. it's got yeah, much yeah. more capabilities it's almost like a fiber cable exactly that's exactly what it is yeah it's like your um it's almost like hardwiring your iphone right for charging it's you know we're, we're getting all that power and data through through the cord uh to be able to keep it keep it up for longer periods of time that's an excellent example about plugging your phone in. Now, what I love is that Elastair has been deployed in 60 different countries, 50,000 hours. Unreal to think that, you know, yeah. that the longevity that this kind of technology provides drones. It's a huge asset for uh, public safety, for law enforcement, for uh you know, surveillance of uh, areas where concerts may be taking place or something if people need to if you know law enforcement or other organizers need to keep an eye on the crowds uh so i mean talk with me about where else you plan on expanding main expansion right now in the u.s is is definitely going to be federal and, and dod agencies um, which is one of the reasons i was brought on to ellis there just to help build that portfolio mm -hmm. a ton of a ton of our business right now is you know local municipalities whether it's your local sheriff's department police department um, DHS office, emergency services. And building off of that, you know, where we see the next, the next generation of, of LSR products going is be able to, you know, get on these platforms and be able to, to do things at scale, to be able to help more people at scale. Um, you know, whether it be the, the armed forces or, you know, the U S border, or it could be, you know, events like you talked about, um, things of that nature. Hopefully that paints a little bit better of a picture. And I think the, the plus for a lot of people, I mean, you see the feedback on your own website. The plus is you don't have to spend the time changing out batteries. You don't have to spend the time bringing the drone down, having to turn it off, pop a battery out, pop a new battery in, turn it back on, get it all set, make sure everything's all linked together again. I mean, this is a huge help when time is of the essence. Yeah. Yeah. You can have one of these flying, you know, on property or, or outside of property with with having that power scenario that, that we can power for longer periods of time, right? We don't necessarily have to be at the at the point of reference or the point of interest, right? Mm -hmm. If you know we have someone over here, I can set up, you know, maybe a quarter mile away or maybe half a mile away, mm -hmm. uh, depending upon what kind of sensor is sitting on the bottom of that. But since we can stay up for longer, you know, instead of us having to fly over to a situation to to be able to diagnose and, and get intelligence on. We can stay farther back with that more powerful sensor and we'll just zoom in um, that way we can look over here and if something's happening over here we can look over there um, yeah no it's it's got a lot of advantages in that scenario and now i know the company is based in france actually so the expansion is in the us is is more of a new concept compared to 
you know, it's starting out in France. Uh, sure. You know, talk with me about its its global reach. Global reach, yeah, that's, that's a very good point. So there are headquarters is just north of Lyon, France, in uh, Dardy. Mm-hmm. That's where our headquarters is. Um, there's about 60 folks over there. We have focuses in terms of we do our production in France. We have a full sales team, full customer service team, production, leadership, C-suite, everything of that mm-hmm. nature focused on whether it be you know Asia Pacific or European or African, uh, Latin America. And then you know our office is basically focusing on Canada and the U.S. and, and wherever we can help from that standpoint you you will start to see as as we get to this more globalized economy if you will there's a lot of crossover um because people are talking to each other all over the world right of you know you guys are doing this over here maybe we should look into that or um you know we heard about this happening in this country maybe that's something we should look into so a a lot of crossover from a global global reach standpoint um but yeah definitely started in france and a, a lot of our operations and everything um, comes out of France today, but yeah, our our office specifically here in the U.S. is is focused on North America and Canada, which you know is a a beast of its own, if you will. Talk to me about your background and what makes you excited about working in this world that is the UAS industry. Yeah, so I, I wasn't in this world previously. Um, wasn't in the military. Um, salute to all our service members out there. My boss being one. Um, so my background. Played college baseball. Um, I love the the grind of that of you know having to earn my spot and, and you know break into new areas, see where I need to improve at. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, got into tech recruiting right out of college. Um, basically, just needed a job. Um, you know the the federal government space interested me. I lived in Northern Virginia, where you know it's probably the highest concentration of, of federal government work in the country. Um, did that for a couple of years. Moved over to BAE Systems. Um, I was doing cybersecurity sales there uh, for cross domain solutions, and that that kind of opened my eyes to a different world to be able to support you know our service members and our federal government, helping keep people safe, right? Um, and then you know moving over to Elastair in the UAS industry, it is it feels like we're very early into into a technological advancement, if that's a word. Um, yeah. I think we're. You know, you th- you think about how long cars have been around. Um, it feels like you know we're in that you know, 1910, 1920 stage right now of, of, you know, what the next 100 years looks like. Um, but it, as far as my background goes, I, I love the challenge of being able to break into new spaces. Uh, I love the challenge of, you know, sometimes not always knowing what the best step is. There's no precedent mm-hmm. set, right? Um, but I, I absolutely love going down those routes and trying to figure out the best way to, to get things done and, and help others. What do you think your number one successful selling point is on something like, you know, the Orion or some of the other models that you have? Yeah, good question. So I, I think the biggest thing is to understand that we're not a, a full, we're not, you know, this isn't our final stage of, of what we have now, right? And, and one thing I always try to portray over to others, whether it's a client, a customer, a partner, things of that nature is, is where we're at today isn't necessarily where we're going to be at, you know, a year from now, two years from now, as far as, as solutions go. Um, mm-hmm. I think we have we have awesome solutions now that, that cover a large part of that market segment, but more is coming, right? You know, if, if a customer over here wants to go in a different direction than what we offer, you know, let's work together and, and figure out what that looks like. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's not a, hey, here's what we have, you know, here's our, our red car. If you don't want a red car, you know, it's, it's not going to work. It's like, no, if you know, if we want to go in a different different direction, let us know what that is, right? We we want to work with you, you know, be that programmatic support, if you will, to to really help build not only, you know, our presence, but more importantly, you know, help people help keep people safe on your end. And you know, if if what we have doesn't make sense, you know, let's figure out what does make sense. I guess I guess as battery power gets gets more powerful uh, with these drones, and as these drones get even more high tech and People find a way to make them better. Are tethered drones still going to be necessary? Do you think? Good question. Um, I, I think there's a little bit of unknown there, right? Um, if you look at a large part of of what we focus right now, as of today, if you think of a mast, you know the big big tall towers you'll see at events um, that have a, a sensor on the bottom. That's that's really where we come in at of of being a faster deployable, higher mast, if you will. I, I think a large 
to, to answer your question, I think a large portion of what we see in the DOD federal space is variable height antenna, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of, instead of having a camera on the bottom of that, you know, now we've got a radio on the bottom of that to be able to extend communications over, over long, long distances. Yeah, um, I could if, see that. I think one of the Kentucky groups mentioned a cell tower on wings. That's it. And I love that. Yeah. yeah. What's the biggest challenge right now? Biggest challenge right now is, is um, I would say, product, not marketability, but just, just being known in this space. Um, you know, if you look in, in our world every day, right, all, all we think about is drones. You know, we're talking to, to drone companies and, and customers that are focused on UAS. Mm-hmm. So it, it seems like, you know, it's, it's everybody in, in the day-to-day life. But then you, you kind of zoom out and you see that, you know, UAS is still a very new topic. Um, there's still a lot of agencies that are, you know, if, if they haven't bought one, they're thinking about buying one, but they're not, you know, trying to figure out the best situation, what makes sense from funding and, you know, guys being able to fly it, you know, having people on, per, on staff that have their, their part 107 or things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Very true. So I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with just the adoption of UAS, um, but we're, we're fighting that fight and, and helping others every day. So we're getting there. Definitely. What kind of feedback have you gotten? Feedback that we gotten is is you know from from our standpoint of our products you know tether works great um, a lot of positive feedback I always welcome the negative feedback because that's how we grow <laughs> yeah. um, I would say from a constructive criticism standpoint of of payload options and that's that's mm-hmm. industry standard right everybody wants to put their own Absolutely. their own flavor of payload on the bottom of a drone. Um, but, you know, from our standpoint, we, we can't integrate with, with every company out there, right, um, just from a resource standpoint. So I think the biggest challenge right now is, is figuring out, you know, working with those customers, seeing what they want, and, and then being able to go out and provide that solution for them um, and just trying to meet those timelines. Well, that's fascinating. Uh, did you ever think you'd be working in the drone industry? No, I did not. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad I'm here. That's for sure. But no, I, I didn't. It was it was you know never really a, a part of my life before mm-hmm. joining Alistair. I had a little exposure to it, um, just from mm-hmm. a cybersecurity standpoint, my background, from my mm-hmm. previous role. But you know, outside of that, I I never thought I'd, I'd be working in the UAS industry. And you have your Part One Hundred Seven. I do. So, how, what was that like studying for that kind of test? I mean, I've, I interviewed someone who's an instructor about this for one of my episodes, Ron Leach. We talked about the importance of what people need to know for tests like that. You, I tell people it's like learning how to fly a plane on paper um, because you have to know about critical angle of attack. You have to know about the weather, how to read the METARs. Um, what was that experience like for you not having much aviation background? A lot of study um, yeah. <laughs> in, a, in a few late nights. It was, uh, I, th- I thought it was really interesting. Even if, you know, even if you're doing it from a hobby standpoint, which, you know, to the best of my knowledge, as, as, you know, the FAA, FAA states, you know, if you're doing anything other than, than flying for a hobby, you know, just go ahead and get your part 107. But I think even from a hobby standpoint, if, if you're into that, if you're into flying UASs for a hobby, just get your part 107. You learn so much, you know, now when I'm sitting at an airport, or I, I understand, you know, when I'm outside the plane on the tarmac, I understand what these signs mean. Um, so it's, it, it's a really cool, really cool certification. Glad I got it. Um, and definitely recommend others to be able to get it. But yes, you have to study for it. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's something that I think a lot of people um, need need to remember for something for sure. yeah. along those lines. Um, what was what was the hardest part? Do you think for you in in that that process, reading the sectional charts or what what was it like? Sectional charts, I actually surprisingly I picked those up rather easy. Um, I don't know why. For some reason, it just it registered with my brain. I would say the hardest thing for me was the weather, the weather patterns. Um, mm. You know, knowing when the you know, what type of fog it is when it rises over water, or, you know, condensing temperatures, things of that nature. Weather was definitely the, the tougher part, but, you know, we got through it. And um, if, if anyone wants to reach out to me for resources, there's, there's a really good resource we use that helps prepare you for that test. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, if anyone has any more questions about Elastair, wants to learn more, how can they find out, uh, you know, more about the company? Elastair.com. E-L-I-S-T-A-I-R dot com. I'm also on LinkedIn, Kyle Mel. A, a little bit funny last name. The H is silent. Um, yeah, we're, we're here in Wilmington, North Carolina. Strategically placed between a couple 
DOD military bases. So if, if anyone wants a trip to the beach, come down to our office and, and hang out. We'll go out and fly with you. If you have topics or suggestions for future episodes, email me, angelswings.jillian at gmail.com. That's A-N-G-E-L-S-W-I-N-G-S dot J-I-L-L-I-A-N at gmail.com. I'll see you later.